you're watching Kristen Cooks and in today's video I have two must-make treats for this Christmas season. So let's go to the kitchen and we'll get started. All right so for I said we were gonna do two treats today and the first one is going to be pecan pie bars. Um, we love pecan pie here. I only make it for the holidays. It's like really rich and um and wonderful so we like to just kind of save that for the holidays and i wanted to make um this variation on that dessert um so starting off with we have um three quarters cup um cold butter and um i used a cheese grater to grate it in that way i don't have to use my food processor to make it into a coarse crumb or anything. I can just stir in the flour and the sugar into this and no extra um, kitchen equipment needed for this step. So I'm gonna do that. We have all-purpose flour here. And I need one and a third, one and three-fourths cup of flour. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. So we have the flour, one and three quarters cup flour and a half a cup of sugar and um, three quarters a cup of butter, whole butter. And I'm gonna use this fork here and just kinda incorporate those three things together. As you can see, very nice. There we go. I don't have to, I hate the pastry cutter. Oh my gosh. I used to have to do like cookie dough with that and, and um, pie dough whenever I wanted to do that. And I hated, oh, that process took forever. So this is, my oven's reheated. So this is a much better way of getting that step done. So let's move on to the next one. For the next step, we're going to, we have, back up. I should back up. I have a 9 by 13 baking dish here and I lightly sprayed it with nonstick spray and I put a piece of parchment paper on the bottom. Like I lined it with it and you want it to be overhanging like this because when the the pecan pie bars come out it'll be easy to just lift it out and cut it when it's all cool. So I'm going to take the flour, butter, and sugar mixture Pour it into the bottom of the pan here. I have my spatula. That is going to assist me in evenly pressing it down on the bottom of the pan. And we want an even layer so that it bakes up nice. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna use this. Oh yeah better. I'm using this because I want to not touch it too much and warm up the butter because it's supposed to be cold. But you know what? I'm going to a little bit here. Oh, it's so pretty. I can see the sugar in it. Looks like snow a little bit. We had a little bit of snow actually in Oregon here last weekend bit early for that I think. Okay next step. So now this is gonna go into a 325 degree oven because I'm using glass. If you're using a uh, aluminum pan, <laughs> my tripod is so broken. You need to use a 350 degree oven. But I'm just gonna put it in here and it's gonna bake for 20 minutes. Oh, okay in the oven. 325, it's gonna look like this so far. So I dump it out of the pan. Okay, 20 minutes. So while the, the crust pre-cooks in the oven, or is it a cookie layer? We'll say cookie. We're gonna start on the pecan pie filling. So in this bowl, I'm just reusing the bowl I just used for the bottom of the dessert. So we're gonna take I have brown sugar here, kind that I like to do myself. 
We're gonna do two thirds cup in the bowl. Pack it down a little bit. Swap. Two thirds. We have a piece of bread in the brown sugar so it stays soft and get hard. And then next step, hold please. Okay, so now with the brown sugar, we're gonna need a third cup of flour. This will help it thicken. Plus one tablespoon of flour. Level things off nicely. Okay, and then we need to get a whisk and whisk together the flour and brown sugar. You don't want to have lumps in your filling. You want a nice, smooth filling. So we're going to make sure we do that. All right, next step comes the eggs, the dark Cairo syrup, vanilla, and a little bit of salt. So first of all, we have four eggs here. And get all this aside and I'm just gonna take my fork and break the yolks get it kind of starting to mix up here throw it in with the flour and the brown sugar these are four large eggs I'm not sure if I said that then we need a cup and a half of the dark Cairo syrup you can use light too but the dark is better You'll get um, some more flavor that way. So this is a trick. I'm gonna spray my measuring cup with nonstick spray and that'll help the Cairo syrup to just fall out. You won't have to stand there forever and wait for it to come out of the, um, the measuring cup. Why can't I think? Does that happen to anybody else or is it just me? Like words just leave my head. I don't know what happens, but they're just completely gone. And I don't know, I guess it's just a older lady kind of thing. I'm not really that old, but I mean, whew. anyway, I'm just wondering if anybody else can uh, sympathize slash or empathize slash um, relate to this. So yeah, it's crazy. So I'm gonna be almost, I have the cup short. I have some light in the, in the pantry that I'll just grab and supplement what I don't have here. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back, okay? All right, so I got that sorted. I'm gonna put that, the two types of caro syrup are going in the bowl. That worked pretty good. I like to scrape. Make sure you scrape. Okay, we're gonna do a tablespoon of vanilla. Oops, shake it. I've measured it before, it's just the cap. So one cap full will be fine. And then half a teaspoon of salt, please. Yes, we need a little bit of salt. We've got a lot of sweet going on here. Half a teaspoon. Okay, get our whisk out and start incorporating those. Okay, be back. Okay, so I have it all mixed up here. As you can see so now the instructions say to let it sit for um, 15 minutes and this is gonna allow the flour to thicken this pecan pie the filling it'll thicken the filling and I'm gonna stir it occasionally and then um, and also wait for the crust to come out of the oven and then we'll finish it off and get it back in the oven okay So 
this is what the crust looks like, or the cookie bottom of it looks like. Um, it's just supposed to be par cooked, not cooked all the way, partially cooked. So I'm just gonna finish letting the, the filling thicken and sit, and then we'll move on to the last part of it. Okay, so the 15 minutes is up. We're done thickening for the filling. Uh, I always get rid of my spatulas before I eat them. Does anybody else do that? Okay, so now we need, we have two cups of pecan pieces. My big two cup measure here. I'm gonna put those in, mix them up. Like so. Okay, let's go to the oven. Okay, here's our crust. Just gonna pour this over the top. Like so. Again, scraping. We don't wanna leave any behind, okay? Get all the good stuff in there, okay? And then we're gonna scooch on back. Point down a little bit. And then it's gonna go, let me get my pot holders. Back in the oven for another 45 to 50 minutes. I'm back. Okay, so we have the pecan bars still um, cooking away in the oven. So I wanted to start on my second treat, which I mentioned, and that is copycat Mounds Bars. Um, my, last night my husband's like, hey, I want a Mounds Bar, you know, why don't you make those for a video? I said, okay. And so I thought I'd surprise him today and make these for him. So um, first we're going to start with three quarters of a cup of a very interesting ingredient in this. And that is instant potatoes, mashed potatoes. <laughs> I thought that was just like really weird when I read it, but I mean, it makes sense, right? You need, it'll hold it together. I need some to hold it together. So in a large bowl here, I just washed it out. I'm gonna put three quarters of a cup of that instant mashed potatoes. Um, I tried to find the plain ones, but all they had that was like sormal, somewhat normal and plain sormal was buttery home style. So I figured, you know, these are gonna be covered in chocolate anyway, so I don't think it'll be a problem. So, three quarters of a cup of the, the instant potatoes, and then we're going to have 16 ounces of powdered sugar, or two cups, if you wanna get technical about it. And then we have four cups of um, <clears throat> unsweetened coconut flakes. You can have either one, the recipe says, but um, why not try and cut down a little bit of the sugar? I mean, there's a lot in here already, but you know. So this is just unsweetened coconut flakes, four cups. It's gonna go in. Then we have one teaspoon of pure almond extract. Add in here. Make sure that. If you want to get too much, that can be overwhelming. So let me get a spoon. And we'll mix her up. Use this one. So yeah, and then um we let this stand in the fridge. We're gonna put it on this half sheet pan like this, or a nine inch square pan, it said, either way. So, let me mix this up and I'll be right back, okay? All right, mix together and then we're going to press it on this baking sheet.
never made this one before, so this is going to be interesting. So, But that's part of the fun of trying something new. I'm just doing it with everybody watching. <laughs> to press firmly in there in the pan again you can line it with either foil or parchment paper but um, I just thought parchment paper would probably work better I'm, I'm assuming you want to pack this down pretty good so that the little bars keep their shape when it's they're all chilled so that's what I'm doing. Okay, so it's all in the pan here. So now it just goes down into the fridge. I'm gonna put it in the fridge downstairs. That's why I say down. Uh, it's just in the fridge for one to two hours or until firm. And then it says you cut into three, 32 bars of the co coconut, you know? Cut it into bars. And then we're going to melt together um, semi-sweet chocolate and oil. Um, and then you just dip each coconut bar into the chocolate and then you put it back in the fridge to set for a little bit and boom, it's done. So it'll be interesting to see how this turns out. Let me tell you, I'm not, I haven't done this one. So it'll be interesting, but um, I'm just gonna continue to let the pecan pie bars um, cook. I'll let you know how they come out. I'll show you when they come out of the oven. And then, oh, I gotta get going on. Today's early release day at school, so I gotta go pretty soon. I just realized that. <clears throat> and then later on tonight, I'll cut these bars up and melt the chocolate and dip them in there, and we'll do a little taste test together. Okay, we'll see you a little bit later. Alright, so the pecan pie bars are done. Hold on a second, I'll get them out of the oven. Well, they look done to me. Um, it says that they could wobble a little bit like jelly, but not be runny. And I think we're there. I mean, it's moving just barely. So I think we're good. So I'm going to let these sit out and cool to room temperature before I put them in the fridge to chill the rest of the way. And then later on tonight, I'll cut some and I'll show you what they look like inside. Okay, have a good afternoon and I'll see you tonight. Alrighty, so now we are finishing the Mounds Bars. Um, I, am, I have discovered that the texture is not right on these. Um, on this mixture, it's really, really dry and it's not sticking together. Um, <clears throat> You had to fix it so I added in about a stick and a half of melted butter just added a little bit at a time and stirred it around squeezed it until um, it would stick together so once I got that right I put it back onto the sheet pan and back into the fridge to chill for about an hour so it'd set and firm up then I melted the chocolate chips that was about a bag and a half of chocolate chips, um, semi-sweet chocolate chips, um, with some avocado oil I put in, but next time I think I'll try coconut oil. Makes sense, right? Um, and then after that, then we took the pan out of the fridge and cut the bars up. Um, the recipe said you'll get about 32 bars out of this. I don't think I got about that much. I did cut them a little bit too big though. Next time I will cut them down smaller. My husband said they were good but really sweet and the bars were too big. So I'll do that next time. Um, but yeah, just try this. It was good. It really, it turned out really well. Um, I think people would like it at a party if you decided to do it for that or, you know, a family get together. It'd just be something interesting to take. So. Um, try this. It's good.
so this is the next day. Um, I had to wait for my mounds bars to chill and there is some confusion. So I just wanted to wait till today and finish this off. But um, these are the, the pecan pie bars. Look, they turned out so good. Everybody loves them. We tried them last night and they're really good, really good. Mm-hmm. They taste just like pecan pie. They're so good. I think I maybe I actually prefer this to the pecan pie. That was really good. And then these are the homemade mounds bars. I have the other, the rest of them over there. They're kind of stuck to the cooling rack because I need to let them sit out before I try to take them off, but let's give this one a try. Mm-hmm. Really good. Look at that. Sorry, I'm in a hurry, so I'm a little shaky, but <laughs> um but those are really good. Really good. They taste just like the real thing. And my daughter likes almond joys. And so I put a couple almonds on some of them. Um, it's a little tricky handling the nuts and the chocolate and all that, but so I want to talk to you about the recipe for these mounds bars. <clears throat> I have it right here. And I've been looking over and over just to make sure I didn't miss anything because I was confused. Um, so the mounds bars are made up of the mashed potatoes, like I said, powdered sugar, the flake coconut, almond extract. And the way this recipe is written, somehow this is supposed to form into these bars that stick together that you can um, dip into chocolate and it's, you know, wonderful. Which you saw yesterday. I, I filmed that myself um, mixing the ingredients and I tried patting them into the pan. I chilled it. I didn't think it would really work because there's nothing to bind it together, like to, to make it a solid um, bar, I guess you'd say. Um, so I went to go last night to finish this recipe, which meant just dipping it in chocolate and then letting it um, set up in the fridge. But it was still just like powder. Like there's no way it could have formed, I could have formed it into something like this that held its shape and dip it in chocolate. Like that doesn't make sense. So I was like, what did I miss? Did I forget to add a liquid or something? And so I ended up fixing it last night. I just kept adding in melted butter and mixing it with my hands until it could form, hold a shape. And you saw that, I, I filmed that last night with my daughter. <clears throat> this is confusing. Whoever, like, the author is Louise Sullivan Ode, like, was this, um, like, tested beforehand before sharing with everybody? Like, I don't get it. Like, it doesn't make sense. This should have had, you have to have some, something, like, butter that will harden when it gets cold so it can hold everything together and it's not in here i ended up uh putting in like a cup and a half of melted butter and i just put a little bit of it at a time and mixed it and mixed it until it could form a little bar that would set in the fridge and become solid enough to dip and handle and put it in chocolate and I'm just confused. I'm confused. I don't understand. How can you put a recipe out like this online and it seems like it's not even tested? Like it doesn't make sense. Cause this, the way it's written, doesn't work. <sighs> However, <clears throat> enough about that. It's good. It's really good. Um, my daughter loved it last night. She tried it. It's really good. I don't think my husband's tried it yet, but. They're good. They taste like mounds bars, but 
Yeah, I'm just baffled by this recipe. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. But I will list it. I'll put it um, down below in the description box anyway, and I'll write down what I did to fix this problem. Uh, other than that, it's a good recipe. I mean, it works. It's good. <clears throat> um, so, thank you for watching. I'm sorry about <laughs> being kind of a Debbie Downer about this this Mounds Bar thing, but um, tried it. There was a flaw. I fixed it, I think. So, I mean, still try it. You know, don't just n not try this if you don't, if you think it's bad. It's not bad. Um, but I just needed um, to do a little tweaking to it because the way this is just doesn't make sense at all. <clears throat> confused, just confused. So have a good day. Thank you for watching. Thumbs up, please. If you like this, um, please subscribe, turn on the bell so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Um, Monday and or Wednesday and Friday are my set days, but I mean, really, I just, if I get an idea, I do it and post it. <clears throat> there you go. So it's more, you know, kind of through the week. I'm trying to do more during this holiday season anyway, because it's Christmas and there's, you know, a lot of good content to, to be able to put up recipes and whatnot. So I'm going to do uh, a family favorite recipe for you. Um, I'll probably film it tomorrow maybe or Saturday, but have a good day. Thanks for stopping by. Hopefully you step, you stay through this whole video and listen to me. <laughs> um, but anyway, see you in the next one.